Okay, we're going to have a look at some curve drawing in this section. We're going to use some simple polylines. To draw a polyline, you click on the, the kind of curve tool and use the left mouse button to digitize on screen. And we just click away until we're complete. When you're ready to finish the curve, you just press the right mouse button to stop. Now you can continue on drawing curves, and all the curves pretty much work like this, pressing the right mouse button. Press the right mouse button again to finish the process. To delete an entity, we can press the delete key, or go up to the delete button. To edit an entity, we can go to the edit option, or press F2. That turns editing on and off. And then once we're in edit mode, we're free to manipulate the entity by just moving the points around and we can see the coordinates change on the side here we can edit them as well if we want to be more precise so selecting an individual point is just with the mouse if we want to select more we can press control and we get a whole range of points selecting now you may have seen a small arrow that's there if I press and hold down the control key uh, we get a constraint that prevents us from moving in any direction it just goes to the nearest axes this also works for kind of tangencies uh, extending the points like so and for an internal point it will be also along the the angle of the lines if you want to select a load of points at once if we're clicking in space it will automatically go to the rectangular selection. Uh, we can also force that to happen by pressing the shift key. Uh, there's more information down on the title bar down here, or the status bar I should say. It gives you information about what's possible as we go along. So if we wanted to delete a point as well we can uh, press delete. Um, we can use the delete button up here and we can also use this uh, sort of context sensitive toolbar. If we want to insert a point as it says down on the status bar, we can press and hold down A, and this gives us a preview of where our point's going to go, and we can click uh, about that area when we want to do that. Uh, we can also insert points using the grid. We've got uh, an insert below and above the selected point, and you can see that those get inserted in the middle of the line. Uh, there's also an option to remove points, like so. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to, to kind of edit graphically or numerically at the same time. Um, of course, we are drawing in 3D. Um, if we wanted to work in 3D, we can sort of change a point like that. If we wanted to copy that point all the way throughout its coordinates, there's an option there, copy copy throughout. But once we're working working in 3D we are exposing ourselves to the, the 3D editing options and you can see now that the cursor gets uh, uh, two coordinates, the Y and the Z coordinates, to indicate the, the direction that we're working in. So you can see now that when we edit a point we get a, an icon that shows us we're edi editing in a plane. And if we press the tab key you can see now, uh, depending on what plane we're working in, and it will tell us down the bottom certain points. Yes, yeah, so we've only got Y, Z and along the vector depending on our viewing angle. So if we go up a little bit more, um, if the viewing angle changes to a slightly better one, then we'll get other angles open to us. This is to stop us working at oblique angles. So if we were to work in the, the Y, X, Y plane at this uh, situation, this angle, and you move the point a little bit, then in terms of the depth of the screen it's a considerable distance so it stops you from making a, a humongous edits with a little skip of the mouse. So again using the control key we can see that we get all the directions available to us there. Okay of course we can also do curves, shaped curves, so this is a, a b-spline exactly the same as a polyline except that it's creating a curve representation. It's created in exactly the same way. And now with two curves on the screen, it gives me the option to do, talk about some of the snapping features. 
So the snapping features allow us to, to snap on a curve or to an endpoint. But in 3D, we're also working in a sort of a working plane. And that working plane is again indicated by the, the cursor. So if I start drawing a curve here, I'm not drawing in the screen plane. I'm drawing in a 2D plane indicated by, by the cursor. Now if I was to do it here, then that, that working plane is defined by my initial point. And once that plane is available, you can see now that it's kind of made an intersection between that working plane and the curve available to us there. So we can now work around that. So this gives us the ability to build up a, a shape, quite a complicated 3D shape, using efficiently the 2D interface that we have. If we're working with a shape curve, we also have opportunity to show the curvature, like so. So we can use this to make a, a fairer curve. Um, depending on what we're doing, um, we can turn on whether this curvature is displayed all the time. So if it becomes a, an automatic feature of curves, and that option is set as I did there on the Polycad options area. So if that's not on, then the curve will always appear as a, a curve without the curvature. If we turn the curvature on, can also affect the scaling so this is going to be a curve in a section so if you wanted to change the the kind of magnitude of the information there for pure 2d curves we have section waterline and buttock um, information but if that curve turns into a 3d curve then it will be affected by a different control and we see there it snapped to another curve so it got quite sensitive about that So it's as simple as that.